Sure. Did you grab a making hypothetical babies lab? That's better. I, I have a hypothetical thing I have to go through. What? That's making babies on paper. That's the worst. I have a bad like, mind. Yeah, I, that's on you, not on me. <laughs> no, it's 100. It's entirely your fault. So you, we, we are going to go through and we're going to look at some traits. There's a section of this called um, introduction that makes sure you go through and you spend some time reading before you answer all the questions because a couple of these questions uh, on page four are answered in your introduction. Um, gamete is the big one that's underlined and in bold that you might want to reference back later uh, for another question. But there's other things in here like recessive, dominant, um, homozygous, heterozygous, genotype, phenotype, all that stuff. So there's a lot of vocab in there, so make sure you go back and you review what this introduction to this activity says. Um, so when we start at the that table on the on the front of this, there are, what are those, nine traits. There's nine different traits, and I think all nine of these traits we've already kind of talked about. But what we want you to do is quick take an inventory on this sheet of what your genotype is. What do you, what traits do you have? So for eye, I, I think eye color, I don't think that was one we looked at before. I think that's maybe the, the one that isn't, hasn't been discussed about. But, uh, and eyebrows, I guess we didn't do either. But the idea is, what color eyes do you have? Notice how it's either brown or non-brown. It doesn't ask blue, it doesn't ask hazel, it doesn't ask green. It's either, are you brown or not brown? Okay, and whichever one you have, circle. Which one? Where do you want to go with? Uh, let's go with brown. So, we have a stool right there that we try not to trip over. We have brown eyes. Okay, do I have dimples or don't I have dimples? I well, do have dimples. This is you, this is not, this is like you physically. What do you have? Okay, yeah, I'm so talking If you don't have brown eyes, don't. Then circle non-brown eyes. Do you have dimples? If not, say no. If yes, you circle yes. I do have dimples, so I'm gonna circle yes, that I have dimples. I have brown eyes and I have dimples. I do have freckles, well, I do not. Too late. Too late, I do have freckles. However, I do not have a widow's peak. I do not have a cleft chin, I have a smooth chin. But I do have unattached earlobes, okay? So those are what you're going through for the first six and you are circling your traits. There's six traits for you to circle. Now, the bottom is the same but now there's three different options for hair texture. There's three different options for hair color. Because incomplete dominant. So dark versus medium versus blonde or red. What would you consider to be dark hair versus medium hair? You think black, dark hair is black? black like, like dark um, like brown? Black, black, dark brown, yeah. yeah. We're medium kind of a judgment kind of a, call. Yeah. You're, I'd say maybe medium. medium. We're yeah. blonde or red right hair. So <laughs> naturally. Natural color. American. So, so blonde if blonde and red are white, or blonde and red are not medium, okay? So kind of this would be light colored hair. This would be like the extreme would be dark black, dark brown, okay? Or are you somewhere in between? And then you make a judgment call on how thick your eyebrows are. Naturally. Naturally. Are they, are they thick, are they thin, or are they kind of in between? Okay, so let's take 30 seconds. And then while, maybe, while you, we're waiting for our, our colleagues, phenotype versus genotype, which one is the thing we physically see or the trait we physically are observing? That's the phenotype. So in our column over here for phenotype, we want you to write what we see. So for us, we have, our phenotype would be brown eyes. Our phenotype would be dimples. 
right? This is based upon what we circle, okay? We have a smooth chin for cleft chin, so we're writing smooth chins, okay? Phenotypo is what we physically see, which is really what we circled, right? That's the intent of that. So you should have a thing circled for each trait, and you should have your phenotype written down. Now, your genotype are the letters. Now, depending upon what your genotype, is, I'm sorry, what your phenotype is, will determine what your phenotype is. If, for example, you have non-brown eyes, your genotype is little b, little b. Right, that's non-brown is little b, little b. Um, for example, we had a smooth hairline. Because it's a recessive trait, the only time we see the recessive tra trait is when it's homozygous, same, recessive. So we circled smooth hairline, that's the recessive trait, right? This is a recessive trait. So we have a little w, little w. We have the recessive trait for a smooth chin, little c, little c. So if you have the recessive trait, your genotype will be homozygous recessive, little, little, whatever those letters are. However, if you have the dominant trait, we don't know whether you are big B, big B, or big B, little b, if we look at brown eyes, okay? So we are gonna leave this up to random chance, not to what my mom and dad had. We're just, for our purposes, we're gonna flip a point. So the idea is if we were to flip heads, we're gonna say that our ch child, or, and we're gonna say that you are homozygous dominant. So you'd be big B, big B. If you flip a coin and you get tails, we're going to say you're heterozygous, so it would be big B, little b. So, for example, we put an H and a T on it because it's easier to see on the screen. So, Mr. DeBoer flipped heads, and head says homozygous dominant, which means over here, he's going to write a big B, big B for himself. Okay? We flip a coin again, each time again. So, now dimples was a uh, heads. So, according to our flip, we have the homozygous dominant genotype, so big D, big D. Freckles. Where am I good? So freckles, now he, Mr. DeVore flipped uh, uh, tails, which says heterozygous, which would be a big F, little F. Yeah. What if you're all recessive? You have every single recessive trait, yeah. then every single one of your genotype will be whatever that one is. No point to flip. So you are flipping a coin to determine whether you're homo. If you have the dominant trait, you are flipping a coin to determine whether you are homozygous dominant or you are homozygous or heterozygous. If it doesn't make the ping, is it really a coin flip? You're yes. You're overthinking it. <laughs> Real quick, I want to talk sex chromosomes. Um, we've kind of maybe mentioned sex chromosomes, maybe we haven't. I don't remember. I've often kind of pointed to that poster on the board. There's 23 pairs of chromosomes. Yeah. Um, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, or a total of 46 chromosomes. Chromosome pair number 23 is referred to as our sex chromosome. So sometimes you'll hear, you know, talk about sex chromosomes. 
There's, you get one from your mom, you get one from your dad, okay? The sex chromosomes are X's and Y's. So XX is a female and XY is male. So if you are a girl, you got an X chromosome from mom and you got an X chromosome from dad, you have two X chromosomes, one came from each parent. Okay. If you are a male, half of your chromosomes came from your mom, half of them came from your dad. Now remember, mom is XX, dad is XY, so I can tell you that if you were a boy, your X chromosome came from mom, and the reason I can tell you that is because if you have a Y chromosome, that had to have come from your dad. Because mom doesn't have a Y chromosome. Okay. So half of your chromosomes come from mom, half come from dad. And we could do a Punnett square with sex chromosomes too. This is a very sloppy one that I drew. But the idea is mom either is going to give you an X chromosome or an X chromosome. Dad's going to give you an X or he's going to give you a Y chromosome. Statistically, two out of four of the offspring are going to be males. And statistically, two out of four will be females. Has to do with the father in terms of whether there's a Y chromosome or an X chromosome, or Y chromosome or not. And the kind of the saying that we often go with is if there's a Y, it's a guy. Or if, if it's a guy, there's a Y. Or something along those lines. Guy and Y. Okay? Why is there a guy? If there's a Y, so, you're a guy. So when we talk about um, when we talk about males versus females, we're talking about uh, the, the sex of the person, we are talking about males versus females, XX, and we're talking about X. Okay? So you should be able to determine what your genotype on the sex chromosome is. XY, Y there's a guy, XX, it's a female. Okay? So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind because what you are right now biologically might not have anything to do with what's about to happen in this activity. Okay. Statistically, 50% of the population should be females and 50% should be males. And in our class setting, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, out of 1, 2, 3, 14, 4. So, eight, so we are not quite 50-50, okay, statistically in this classroom right here. But when we look at like national averages or world averages, it's pretty darn close. It's like 49%, I think, is when we looked it up. Right? So it's pretty, pretty close. Um, Henry VIII is something we should talk about at some point in time, because um, he was a king of England, I think he was, yes. um, that beheaded his wives because they wouldn't give him a rightful heir to the throne, the boy, um, his words, not mine, um, because he blamed the, the, the women for not producing a son. However, it's the Y chromosome, which determines male versus female, and he was the Y chromosome donor, which he didn't donate. He should have beheaded himself in, in, himself, <laughs> yes. However, we would claim that he didn't know better, although beheading people just because of that does it seem like the right choice, whether you know the biology or not. But, yeah. So what's going to happen is you are going to partner up with someone, okay? It doesn't matter your gender and your partner's gender, but someone in the partnership will have to be a male and someone will have to be the female. It doesn't matter what you are versus in this activity. But if you and your partner can't decide who's gonna be the boy and who's gonna be the girl, you can flip a coin and whoever wins the coin toss can get to pick whether they're the boy or the girl. Okay, if you need to come to that. If you need a moderator and an independent coin flip, we can do that too, but I think we can kind of figure it out. Unbiased coin. So what's going to happen is you are going to have to figure out, you can't do this step, step yet. You can't do this step yet because you don't know if you're going to be the boy or the girl in your partnership. Okay, Mr. DeBoer and I are going to make a hypothetical baby together and I am going to be the female and Mr. DeBoer is going to be the male. Okay, so Mr. DeBoer's um, genotype that he's circled on page one is going to go in the bottom where it says sperm one 
and sperm too. Okay? My genetic information is going to go up in the egg because I'm going to be providing the genetic information for the eggs because I'm the female. Okay? So the thing to note in terms of sex chromosome, because I am producing the eggs, I am XX for sex chromosome. Mr. DeBoer is producing the sperm, so he is, pro he is providing an XY, okay? So right where it says in like sex chromosome, the, you can write this down um, because in the eggs is gonna be an XX and down on the bottom where it's gonna be a sperm, it's gonna be an XY. Again, you can't do all the steps that we're about to do yet. So this is when you get with your partner, this is what you'll do. What you should do is you should transfer your genotype from page one, this column, you should transfer those genotypes from page one to this column over here. I know there's not a spot for it. I really encourage now. You can't do this yet unless you and your partner have already determined who's the boy and who's the girl. And if that's fine, then I guess you could do this along the way. But Mr. DeBoer and I, we armed wrestled and someone won and someone lost. And in the end result, I'm producing the egg, he's producing the sperm. Okay? We know who I'm won. We know who won this arm wrestle. We won't call it out though. But okay. So this is what Mr. DeBoer's genotype is, is right here, okay? Now, what's gonna happen is, were we homozygous for all those first ones? Yeah. Darn it. Okay, whatever, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. So what we are going to do during meiosis, there's this idea that's called the law of segregation. And the law of segregation, when we drew meiosis, we did chromosomes, remember? And we had a red chromosome and we had a green chromosome. And I always talk about whether it's red, green, or green, red is independent and ran is random. That's called the law of segregation. And then what happens is they separate during meiosis to make two separate sex cells, which then further make four sex cells, okay? So what happens is, and when we draw these Punnett squares, mom's gonna either give you one allele or she's gonna give her give you the other allele. And you don't necessarily know which one, it's, it's random. It's like a flip of a coin. That's why we do Punnett squares is predictive. So what we do then is Mr. DeBoer is gonna produce two different sperm cells. And what's gonna happen is he's either gonna pass on this big B or he's gonna pass on the big B. Okay? So we, how's it going? So technically, technically we're supposed to flip a coin. Okay, so up in the instructions, instructional step number four, it says, fill in the table of appropriate, flip a coin to determine which allele goes where. So he's gonna flip a coin, and like Jason said, gee, I wonder which one Mr. DeBoer is gonna give us, right? But we're gonna flip a coin, and when we flip a coin, it's going to, it's heads, and according to our little cheat sheet, heads, the what is the first? First allele. It says the first allele is going to go in the sperm one. And the second allele, okay, so this is the first allele, goes here. And the second allele goes here. Now, if it's homozygous, you don't really need to flip a coin, right? But we're going to, he flipped a coin again, and he got tails the second time. So he had to put the big D here and the big D there, right? But again, because it's homozygous, it really doesn't matter because you have the same alleles, homozygous, same allele, okay? Where it does matter is whenever it's a heterozygous trait. So we flip a coin and it's heads, which heads was the first allele, goes in the first column, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a big F goes here because he flipped heads. The, the first allele goes here. The second allele, lowercase f, goes there. Okay. He flips again. Okay. And look, it's a tails this time. Okay. It is a tails. Okay. And because he flipped a tails, the second allele goes in that first spot. Okay. He flips it again, 
It was tails. So the second allele, which is what we see, can you slide it just a bit? This is what the second allele is a lowercase r goes there, the big R goes there, and then for the sex chromosome, we flip it again. Tails, so that means the Y chromosome is going to go. Okay, so Mr. DeBoer, flip a coin. Anytime it's heterozygous, we need to flip a coin. Technically, you could flip a coin for everyone, but if it's homozygous, you have the same alleles. So that's the idea that Mr. DeBoer is going to produce two sperm cells, and this is going to be the, the, uh, the alleles in sperm cell number two, and this is going to be the alleles in sperm cell number one. Now, what will happen, you and your partner will have to share information. So we have, uh, you have a page for a second, I'm just writing this one down. So, page. so we have some uh, egg cell information and we have some sperm cell information because we did this twice, right? So you and your partner will each have information that you need to transfer to each other, you have to share with each other. Now what's going to happen is you are going to make a child. You are going to combine egg number one with sperm number one. So based upon the information that you have on page two, you are going to combine the alleles of you and your partner. So we're going to kind of point to where what we have on our sheets. Is it in Tennessee? So, for example, uh, the egg cell has a lowercase b, and the sperm cell has a big B, okay? So on page three, we're going to combine these. Now, if there's a capital letter, which one goes first? Okay, so the eye color of our beautiful baby number one is going to be a big B, it's going to be a little B. Our baby is going to have a big D, big D for dimples. Our baby is going to have a big F, is that another big F, Mr. Yeah. Moore? I think so, right? Yeah. Big F, big F. Our hairline is going to be a big W, little W. We're going to genetically combine our information. Now, that's the idea is we're making a, a beautiful child. And let's jump down to the sex chromosomes. We have an X and we have a Y chromosome, okay? So our gender of our, is this a boy or a girl? X, Y? It's a boy. boy. Congratulations on your beautiful baby boy, okay? So child number one is gonna be a boy. Then what happens is we take egg two and sperm two, we combine those to produce child number two. Okay. Based upon our genotypes that we created in page three, we can then look on page one and say, hey, big B, little b is going to have the phenotype for uh, brown eyes, I believe it was. Okay. Big D, big D, our child is going to have dimples. Big F, big F, I don't remember, is that freckles or no freckles? freckles. That's freckles. Okay, so we are going to be able to express our phenotype or our physical characteristics of our beautiful baby boy. And then we are going to draw to our best of our ability what our beautiful baby boy is going to look like. Artistic abilities vary, I know a lot. The key is, does your picture express the traits that your child has? Does your baby, does your picture show brown hair? Does your... Uh, pictures show that your baby has dimples, that your baby has freckles, that they do have a widow's peak. Those are the things that your picture needs to make sure it includes. Okay? Now, of course, it's hard to show brown hair if you don't use colored pencils. So after we get the rough sketch drawn in, of course, we will then add the color or get the widow's peak. Okay? But this is a boy. Okay? And that's beautiful baby that's number awesome. one okay and then we also look and say hey we also make baby number two okay on the back page four there are ten questions I believe there's ten questions there's one I really want to make sure we talk about it's question number nine 
We'll walk around and we'll help you with those parts, okay? So number nine, the idea when we flipped our, our coin in order to determine the gamete formation, gamete is a vocab word found in the introduction. We're talking about making egg cells or sperm cells. When we flipped our coin, what that is trying to illustrate is this thing that Mendel referred to as the law of segregation. Okay, that's called the law of segregation. So that's the idea that we talked about with my meiosis. Is the chromosome green red or is it red green? It's a flip of a coin as to what chromosome goes on what side. It's a random event. That's, that's called the law of segregation. Okay, so Mr. DeBoer tells me there are 14 of you, which is perfect because that means you have seven partners that we can make. Um, you need to keep your coin still because you will need uh, to go through and find a partner. Now, when you get, I would encourage, I would encourage you and your partner to go to a lab station. You don't have to, but hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We need, this is six feet, okay? We need to be six feet apart. And I'm going to take pictures so if Mr. Rather comes and says, hey, who was working with so-and-so within six feet for 15 minutes? I can say, no, because I measured and they were over six feet apart. Now, how do you get six feet apart from someone at a lab station? One person sits there and one person sits here. That's six feet. That is not six feet apart. This is not six feet apart. Now, there may be a time that you have to be closer than six feet, but that should be minimized in terms of time and then we spread out after that event, okay? That also means that you gotta kinda keep in consideration the other person at that lab table, okay? So like if Jason's sitting on the inside, we gotta make sure we're, the next table is sitting on the outside point, okay? That's, I have six lab tables, I don't have seven lab tables, so that means one partnership gets the opportunity to not work at a lab table. Some, we can get add some depth, right? Okay. So whoever is Lily's partner. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not. Are you Lily's partner?